Three months ago, I started an Etsy shop from scratch and you guys have all been loving my monthly updates, the first month on Etsy update and the second month on Etsy update. And so today I'm sharing the third month on Etsy update and it's actually been the best month and I'm quite surprised. I also hit a milestone in my Etsy shop, so I'm very excited to share with you in this video. So I'll share with you what my results were for January, 2023, and then I'll also talk about my ad spend. And I'll also talk about like why I think my Etsy shop is working and why it did well in January. And then I will also answer some FAQ questions that you guys left in the comments in the last video. Like what is my Etsy product? Where do I promote my Etsy products? By the way, a lot of you have asked me if you can actually download this Google sheet. I didn't think anyone would want this because it's such a simple Google sheet and I feel like anyone can make it, but I did make a <laughs> template so you guys can download this if you want and like use it to keep track of your own Etsy. So as you can see, January was quite good and my Etsy milestone is that I hit $1,000 in net profit and I actually received $1,000 in my bank. I haven't checked my bank account today, but Etsy said they sent the payment today, so I'll get the payment soon in my bank account. The very interesting thing is that I only added three more listings in January. My goal was actually to add 12 because of the YouTube blowing up and because I was preparing for my Vietnam Southeast Asia trip, I just felt so overwhelmed and I didn't have time to make listings. And then I was also, like kind of in a creative rut because there was like a new product I was making, but I just couldn't, I don't know, I just couldn't get the design out of me. It was just so hard to design. I think like after the first week of January, I just kind of opt working on the new listing so I could focus on my YouTube channel growing and also like trip planning. So I only added three more listings. The conversion stayed the same. It was 4.2%, a lot more visits than the past month. So like double the visits and then orders was like double the orders. So that was quite nice. The reason why I think the orders doubled and like the visits doubled and everything, I think usually December is like maybe a quieter month for my niche because people are pairing things for the holidays and they don't have time to like work on their business because I sell Etsy, sorry, I sell Canva templates for like a specific kind of business owner. December is just usually slower. And then maybe also because I just literally started the shop in like October. So I started making sales in November and December. I think Etsy was trying to see what my shop is doing. So I was still, I'm still like a pretty new shop. So in January, it was quite good. And then I also feel like because in January, people make new year's resolutions to start a business. I think maybe that's why there were more people searching for my things. It's really interesting because this month, and I'm recording this on February 6th, I've only made four sales this month so far. So it's like really weird because in January, I would make an average of two sales per day, but in February, I haven't even made like one sale per day. So it's really interesting. Maybe like the whole New Year's resolution rush is over and now it's going back to my normal state of like sales, I guess, like a regular sales numbers. So I had one friend order two things from me. So that's why the total orders minus what my friends ordered, uh, the total order number is 64. Um, oh, actually you can see that the total orders on my Etsy statistics is 63. And that's because there were three orders where people ordered two items. So even though it's in like one order, I still kind of count it as two orders because they ordered two items. So that's why I put 66 instead of 63. And the revenue was 1200 ad spend. So the entire month of last, uh, the entire last month, I did $1 a day for ads. And the result was like triple the amount in revenue, which I would say is quite good. Um, if you want to know what I spent like how my ads were like the last two months, go back and watch my second month on Etsy video because I talk about what happened with these two months. And I did change the ad spend a lot more. Like uh, this one was $2 a day, I think for half a month. And then I did, I think I did $5 a day. And then maybe I went back to $1 a day um, or $2 a day. I can't remember what I did last month, but yeah, in January it was $1 a day. So yeah, the result was quite good, I would say. And to look at my Etsy ads performance here, the views, it goes really like up and down. It's really interesting. Um, clicks are like that. In February, you can see that. Oh shoot, I'm doing wrong dates. Okay, let's look at last month. So views, it goes like up and down. The clicks are kind of, I mean, 
Okay, three clicks. And then orders, not that many, but also it's like $1, $1 a day for ads. And the revenue is like that. It's kind of just really sporadic. And yeah, this was like $1 a day. So yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, actually, if we go back and look at last 30 days, let me show you something. So on February 1st, I decided to just like see what would happen if I don't do any ads. Yeah, that's why I turned it off for six days. But in order for me to film this YouTube video and for me to like look at the analytics for ads, I actually have to turn on my ad spend. So I actually just put it to $2 a day today. <laughs> so I'm like I have to use ads so I can make this video. Okay, net profit was $1,000 according to Etsy. And then what I received in the bank was this amount. And yeah, there was like a discrepancy in like the other two months as well, which I explained more in my other video. But basically I think the discrepancy comes from like maybe when I'm looking at, at my statistics, I put like January 1st to January 31st, but maybe Etsy calculates the month as January 1st to February 1st. So that's why there's like a little bit of discrepancy, but the discrepancy this month wasn't as big as the last two months, so I think that's good. I, I don't think it's a huge deal. So something else I mentioned in my last video was that in January, I would try out Pinterest. I actually did not look into Pinterest at all because I just didn't have time because of trip planning and the YouTube getting bigger. Pinterest is still on my list, um, so stay tuned. I will do, I will try out Pinterest at some point uh, when I have more time, but I think my my priority for February, which is this month, is to create more listings because I haven't posted in maybe around a month. Maybe that's why my orders are going down. I'm not sure because it, Etsy sees that I'm not that active anymore because I used to post a lot more. In December, I made 12 more listings. So last month, I only had three listings. I made three more listings. And so I think I really need to prioritize adding more listings now. And Pinterest will come later. So January was quite good and I want to kind of give like, um, I guess it's like my theory of why my Etsy shop did well in January and why it has been doing well like for the first three months of opening. And I think the big thing, like the major thing is the niche. I think the niche is actually very good. A couple of different products and then like for those products, I have like some variations of products. So that's how I have like 23 listings. It's not like 23 completely different products. There's like a couple like main ones and then there's like different variations of the main ones uh, just to change up, like I changed up the font and the colors and the style a little bit. By the way, this is not my bra strap. This is the audio thing. <laughs> and to talk about pricing a little bit, um, when I price my items, I actually price them more expensive than my competitors because like, I'll just give you an example. Um, so when I was doing Etsy research, some people were selling like a similar product for $3, but for me, I didn't want to sell my thing for $3. Um, I actually sold mine, I put $12 and it's because I just don't feel comfortable selling my thing for $3. Like I think it's worth a lot more and like it's very high quality. And the other thing is like when people see that something is more expensive, that kind of also signals to them that it's higher quality. Even though the $3 item that my competitor has, and there's like a lot of people selling it at $3. Actually, there's like a range. There's like $3, $5, $10, $15, mine's $12. So I'm in the more higher range of that product. Like those $3 sellers are making a lot of sales. And for me, I think it's like, I could put mine at $3 and maybe I would make a lot more sales, but I just feel like in the long term, I wanna brand my shop as like a more premium shop with like really good quality products. And I don't want to put the price that low. So I'm okay if I make less sales, but then my price is higher. I think that's like, just, it feels better to me to have that kind of shop. Okay, something else I've been doing and I saw other sellers doing this, but I don't actually know if it's a good strategy, but I think it's been working so far. I make a new sale every single day. So you know how when you make a, when you're searching for an item on Etsy, so let me just, I'll show you an example. Okay, let's say we're searching for um, digital planner. Okay, something like that. Uh, okay, so for example, if we look at these ones, there's like sale ends in nine hours, sale ends in three hours, sale ends in four hours, and there's like this bright green highlighted thing. So 
I noticed that there were some sellers who do a sale every single day. So there is always a thing that's highlighted. And if you compare like, uh, for example, this one, like this does have a sale. That one also has a sale. But if you compare this one and this one, doesn't this one just stand out way more because it has like sale ends in nine hours. So it creates this kind of urgency. Like it makes so much more, it makes a lot of sense to me. So what I started doing like right at the beginning of when I started my Etsy shop, like even in November, I would do like one sale every single day. I would put like different percentages. It is kind of a hassle to make ev a sale like for every single day. I would like do it and then schedule it for the whole week. So like seven sales. And so was, sometimes I would do 15% off, sometimes 20, 25, 35, 40. Uh, I think 40 is usually the maximum that I go to, but I basically have like a sale every single day. Let me know in the comments if you think that strategy is good. I just started doing that because personally it made sense to me to create that urgency every single day and then it has like that green highlight thing. Something I noticed, this is just like a random thing I noticed, is that a lot of my orders are on weekdays, so not the weekend, but like more on weekdays. Um, so you can see here like January 11, January 18, 23, uh, January 30. So if you look at January, so like 30, what was the other one? January 11, that's a Wednesday. January 18 is a Wednesday. January 23rd is Monday. 30th is a Monday. Yeah, so it's quite interesting how I get more sales on the weekdays, but I'm not sure if it's weekdays because my <laughs> when I do Etsy, uh, when I put on the sales every single day, I don't really follow a pattern. I just do like randomly, like one day I'll do 15%, another day I'll do 40%, another day I'll do 20%, another day I'll do 30%. <laughs> so I can't say that correlated, you know, like, it, or causation. Okay, anyways, I don't know if like people are buying on the weekdays or if it's like the promotion that I have every single day, I, I'm not sure. But it's just something that I notice, and I'll have to like keep tracking and like see um, if this is like an actual pattern over like a couple of months. Okay, so FAQ questions, what am I selling on Etsy? People are always asking me this. I have never ever revealed my shop in public. I haven't revealed it on YouTube. I haven't revealed it on my Instagram. Only like my close friends who don't do business, like they know what my shop is, I show them. So my shop is Canva templates. It's all Canva templates. They're all digital downloads and they are for a specific kind of business owner. That's all I can say. It's like something that people would use to that will help them in their business. But I'm not going to say what kind of business is that uh, it is because that would kind of just like reveal everything. So please stop asking me what I am selling. And I don't think I'm actually going to reveal it because I think once I reveal it, I don't know, maybe people on YouTube will like buy my things and it's gonna skew everything. So I wanna keep everything like in Etsy and yeah, so I can like share like the these like real results with you. Next question is where do I promote my Etsy products? So literally it's all just on Etsy. I don't promote it on my YouTube. I don't promote it on my own social media. I don't promote it on Pinterest. It's literally just an Etsy. It's all from Etsy organic search and from like Etsy ads. Can you create a template link with Canva free version? Yes, you can. I think in the past, maybe you couldn't, but like I just use Canva free now. I used to have pro, like a pro trial just so I could do my YouTube thumbnails and like have the background removal feature. But I figured out another way to do background removal feature. Actually, some of you commented on my previous video telling, giving me suggestions on how I could do that. So now I don't use Canva to remove the background. So I don't need premium anymore. So I just use Canva free and yeah, I can make template links with Canva free. What do I use for mockups? So I made a really in-depth tutorial on how I create my Etsy listing photos for marketing. Uh, you can check out that video, but basically for mockups, I just use Canva and I use smart mockups and smart mockups is free. So you can use it for free, but there's also like a paid version, which has a lot more photos of mockups. So I just use the free for now and it works. So if you're not sure how to create the best Etsy listing photos, I've made this 20 minute demo video on how I do it. And then also there is a downloadable Canva template for listing photos. So go watch that video now. And yeah, let me know if you have any other questions, just leave them in the comments and then I will answer your questions in the fourth month update video.